suppressed. Along with turning off the news, they say don't use Facebook either. Facebook will make you think everybody else's life is great and, and yours isn't. There's problems on Facebook, though, too. When people write about their own problems in their world, it, it tends to be the anonymous guy in the supermarket line or the lady who cut you off as you're trying to pick up your kids from school. But as I read the problems on CNN, as CNN tells it, and I read the world's problems as, as people tell it on social media, I kind of notice a pattern. In both cases, there's something pretty similar going on. In both cases, there's something that reflects all too clearly. There's a lot in common between the two. When you look at them, in one sense, they begin to look a lot like each other. In fact, they begin to look a lot like you and me. Because sin, in the end, all looks pretty much the same. It's you and I with our fingers out, pointing at everybody else as the problem, blaming everybody else for the problems in our lives, the problems in the world. Is the world going to hell in a handbasket? Apart from Jesus, yeah, I guess so. But the root, the root of the problem is not in everyone else. For each and every one of us, it begins in each and every one of us. The world is, is broken by sin, and, and we add to that sin by our, and, and its brokenness with our every thought, word, and deed. That's the bad news. The world is going to hell in a handbasket, and we're part of it. But here's the good news. Our Lord has an answer to all of this mess. Oftentimes when, when people are sick or dying or in the hospital, I like to read them actually the epistle from Romans 8 that we read tonight, which says in part, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword or the latest bad news on, on CNN? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor the person on social media who said something you don't agree with, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's a really good news. Because with everything wrong in the world, there is something right. God has done something right. He has sent his own son, Jesus Christ, to take the broken sin of the world on himself and to make it right again. And he does it in the most incredible way. He sees us with our fingers out, pointing away from ourselves, pointing at everybody else as the cause to the world's problems. And then he offers himself as the target for the blame. He knows that it is our sin. He knows that we really should be blaming ourselves for the brokenness of this world, and yet he says, point at me. Let me take the blame. Let the world's problems rest on my shoulders, and I will pay for the sin of the world. I guess what I want to say is this. Unless and until Christ returns... The world's problems will not go away. While sin and death are still at work in this world, this world will remain broken. Tragedy will still happen. We're still in well, sin and death will still sin against each other. And the church will remain under intense spiritual attack. And people will still die. Yet Jesus is still the answer. Year after year, the same. Jesus stands in the gap just as he always has. He, he still gives himself for the sin of the world in the same ways that he always has. He's never changed. And that's why every good church has both a cross and an altar front and center. Because that's where Jesus is for us. That's where we should keep our attention. We should keep those things in our eyes. This is where and how he gives 
the answer to all the world's problems. The body and blood of Jesus shed for us for the forgiveness of our sins. So come what may, in 2015, Jesus is still the answer. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding.